In this tutorial, I will show you how to render your V-Ray standalone scenes on GarageFarm.net Cloud Render Farm. To use our online render farm, you need to download, install and run our uploader app called RenderBeamer and a plugin for V-Ray standalone, which will take care of checking and preparing the scene for upload. If you haven't done it yet, we have a tutorial on how to do it. The link is in the card and the video description below. First, let's create our VR scene file. You can do that from any 3D application with V-Ray integration. I have a simple interior project with a still image 3D view prepared to render with V-Ray. To export a VR scene file to render with V-Ray standalone, I click on the Render menu and select Export to VR scene. The exported file contains all the necessary information to render my image. It is good to check all the V-Ray rendering settings before the export. However, there is an option to change and override some of them in our plugin during the upload process to the farm. Please make sure that the exported scenes are well prepared for farm rendering. This step should include checking for missing textures, caches or any other kind of assets linked to the project file. It is best practice to have all the textures, caches and other kinds of assets next to the exported scene when exporting a VR scene file. Once you have your VR scene file ready and our plugin installed, you can send the file to be rendered on our cloud render farm straight from your system file browser. Just right click on the file and select Send to Farm. Remember that you need your Render Beamer app running in the background to do the upload. Our V-Ray Scene plugin will start checking exported VR scene file and then Render Beamer will open Scene Preparation Setup tab. Here you can do the final setup before sending the file to the cloud. The first and most important field is Render Mode. Our plugin offers four render modes designed for specific use cases, like rendering still shots, animations, animations where just the camera is moving. So make sure you select the right one for your needs. Choosing the wrong one might result in an incorrect render. Now let's take a look at what those render modes are and when to use each one of them. Render as is. This keeps the scene settings as they were exported. It is useful for scenes with pre-cached GI or for shots which do not need global illumination caching. In most cases, render as is is the mode that you should use. It will work out of the box in most rendering scenarios. Full animation. If your scene contains more than just an animated camera, you should use full animation mode. Please note that the full animation mode changes the global illumination to irradiance map and light cache. Camera animation. This mode should be used for scenes where the camera is the only object that's animated. Still image. This is our custom distributed rendering system. It is designed especially for high resolution still shots. Still image mode renders your scene with strips, horizontal or vertical render regions. After the strip render jobs are completed, strips are then stitched to one final resolution frame in a merge job. There are a few additional settings you can set for the project. New project name. You can use this option if you want to change the project name. Otherwise, the project will be named the same as the folder containing your VR scene file. Upload original scene. This option will forward your original VR scene file unprocessed by our plugin and upload it along with the project. It can be used by our support for troubleshooting procedures. By default, it's turned off. Frame range. You can use this field if you want to override the settings exported to your VR scene file. Override resolution. By default, this option is disabled, which means the resolution exported to the VR scene file sequence will be used. If you want to set a different resolution, enable this option and put in the desired resolution. Extension. Here you can check or adjust the format of the output file. Asset tracker. The second tab in the setup window is the Asset Tracker. It is a tool to check and locate the assets linked to your VR scene. In case any assets have been moved or file path changed, the Asset Tracker will indicate it 
with a red X sign, meaning the asset is missing. Use the file browser to indicate the missing file's new location and press the relink button. The red signs now turn to green ticks, meaning the assets are there to be used in the rendering. In cases there are obsolete links that will not be needed for rendering, just use the ignore missing assets option. Once the scene is prepared, just use submit button to continue with the process. Now render beamer will collect whole scene data and upload it to the farm. Once the process is done, you can submit your render job using our online web manager tool. For more info about web manager functions and its usage, please check dedicated web manager playlists. Once all the frames are rendered, just go to the render beamer and download the frames. And here are the results. Happy rendering!